did not record someone's face. That, that one time where I forgot to, I forgot, one of You're the cameras just talking to start. the wall or whatever? Just talking, just, just you talking to nobody. <laughs> just you have free associating, basically. I'm not sure you don't do that or whatever when I'm not around. <laughs> when people just don't exist. <laughs> You're just talking yeah. to yourself or <laughs> just talk, I just do multiple voices. I've gone full, uh, full watch me get full there Norman Bates. There goes Ash talking to the broccoli again. Just Norman Bates in it. <laughs> yes, Mata. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Welcome to another Inside Tabletop. I am back with Chris from Loads of War Games and Hobbies. What's going on, everyone? You may know Chris from such popular YouTube titles as uh, Star Wars Legion is Dead or <laughs> War Machine and Not Your Dad's War Machine or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever gets them going this Whatever week. Whatever gets them going this week. Whatever you're roping up from people yeah, and uh, right. watching your videos about yeah. and then having incredibly have measured. nothing to do with the title. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> incredibly measured and reasonable videos. I like uh, that you're the wild man in the video too and Jay's the straight man. It's funny how much your dynamic on camera reminds me of me and Owen. Oh yeah. Well, think about it. Oh, like, I, that makes Owen sense. And, yeah. Owen and Jay have the same voice. They have the same like deep voice. You guys don't know my old my old collaborator Owen, um, who moved out west to British Columbia or not to British Columbia to Alberta. Uh, we had a very similar dynamic: the straight man and the wild man. You're just kind of like low key and even keeled and whatever, yeah. and you're just like ah, throwing stuff Numbers at him guy. basically. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. got to deal with it. And he's, he's just like trying not to I'm crack up or whatever. Circuit. Yeah, he's yeah. watching short circuit the whole time. That's my favorite. That's why I like watching your videos. I'm watching Jay in real time have to like deal with you basically, uh, and slowly, slowly have to keep himself together. But I don't. Crack. I don't know. The best part of the video, I don't tell him the one liner I'm going to throw at him at the beginning, no. and it just you try and break him every <laughs> I just time. Try to break him every yeah, video every single time. It makes me so happy. Um, so you can check out yeah. uh, Jay and Chris's YouTube channel. Um, it has. You're only about a year. You're coming up on a year old. Ten months, I think. Ten months, doing yeah. It. Yeah. Since that's we actually awesome. started trying or whatever. Yeah, started trying. That's right. Since we started copying the clickbait titles and then making weirdly right, yeah. really informed videos. Oh, you can know the thumbnail game is actually more new. Like we've we've only, yeah. like, only about like the last couple of months. Up until then, we had <laughs> black screen with text on yep. it. Yeah, it was incredible. Like classic, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Very, I like that. Very I'm honest and that. genuine, you know? They are you know very honest and genuine. Well, when the, phone, when the phone rings in the background or the UPS guy shows up halfway through the video, that's how you know that you're actually- Hey, that's only happened once. Actually <laughs> informed. Well, you're. We, we talked about this in the last video. Jay and Chris uh, kind of represent, I think, what's interesting where most videos on YouTube are the people that would be sitting around the game table having a conversation in a game store. Mm -hmm. Whereas you guys are the people behind the cash wrap having a conversation. Right. And and I, I think that's fascinating because it's two very different points of view, right? The people with the end users commenting on the industry versus who don't necessarily, not inside the industry, so they don't necessarily have that perspective versus people who've lived, who literally have to live in both worlds as a consumer from the manufacturer and as a retailer down to the end user. 100%. You're, you're living in both worlds. So your videos Talking are to both sides, existing in the middle, dependent on both. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. 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 You're, the, you're the bridge between those two worlds, which I think yeah. makes your YouTube channel very interesting. It's why I have you on to Inside Tabletop. So Ooh. today's topic, oh, it's a near and dear to you because <laughs> 10 years ago, yes. when you opened your store and I started Girl Miniature Games. Yep. And my son was born. Yep. I guess that's a th distant third in importance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we had a conversation about this game getting launched, mm -hmm. and you and I actually were the earliest adopters, I think, locally. Definitely, because we of this game. I think like the, the first three editions, we like did the start the whole starter box thing, yep. and like yeah, you and I painted the starter. I, we painted Soul Worlds yep. together. We did the original one together, and of course, we're talking about Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Yeah, and we embraced it as something that was new and exciting. And I think the magic trick that you and I can do, which is why we keep people like like Owen and, and Jay around for, is we can clean the slate for something. I have the ability which, in my brain to uh, mentally clean the slate. Apparently that's a really rare skill. I, I, never really, I never really respected that, but apparently only something like 2% of people yeah. can be told a bit of news and then the next day move on. Yeah. And it, it, I don't know, some, maybe it's a sociopath thing. But <laughs> it's entirely possible we're both sociopaths. It's entirely possible. But like... So someone tells me like, okay, Chris, we're uh, we're destroying the game you've loved for 20 years, mm -hmm. but we're going to give you a new one and it's good. I'll be like, okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give, that give it a try. Yeah, I'll give yeah. it a shake. Cool. Why shouldn't I? <laughs> Why shouldn't I? <laughs> well, I think also, I think the magic ingredient to that, just to just to kind of to, to tie this up before mm -hmm. we talk about AOS 4, is I believe my capacity for doing that is that something ending doesn't devalue to me the experience I had with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I and and I don't feel grief for very long before it transforms into gratitude for what I had with it. So I looked at the end of Warhammer Fantasy Battle as it didn't go anywhere. It still existed for me. I mm -hmm. had all my armies. I could still play the game if I wanted to. 
nothing new for it was just like the end of a movie so i grieved it in the same way that i grieved the end of the lord the return of the king right you know what i mean yeah. but i can still go back and watch those movies and play them over and over 100 and i think that's just how i'm wired for things where when something's over i don't grieve some type of future i thought i was going to have with it i just am grateful for the time that i got with those things and my relationship to my hobby is very much like that yeah i i, I would say i'm similar in that sense uh where where change i guess i expect change sure and uh i guess in, and we're trained this way obviously in, in, in a lot of ways like you said with movies video games like you know your favorite video games they all had a, a an, an end yeah and you stopped playing them usually at some point um so miniature games are can, can be the same way and like i said it, it, it I still look very fondly back on uh, my Warhammer fantasy battles, yeah. you know, times and experiences. Yeah. Are you and I ever going to be in the NHL? No. No, but, but I enjoyed playing <laughs> hockey when I was younger. That's right, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm I, turning 40 next year. I'm like, I guess it's over. Yeah. <laughs> you are turning 40 I'd be the next oldest, year. I'd be the oldest uh, hockey so player in the league or whatever. I'm so excited you're finally going to be 40. <laughs> oh, fantastic. When I called you middle-aged when you were 38. And you were like, I'm not middle-aged. It was, was like, it was, no one had said that to me before. It was really <laughs> profound. I was like, I stood, I stood sat I there watched, kind of like, yeah, just like gutted a bit. I know? watched the light go to your eyes. Mm -hmm. It made me so happy. Um, but I think that's it. I think with AOS in particular, I'm uh, in all games really, is I'm able to, to treat every new opportunity, every new iteration of something as going like, I will now re-engage with this and see what I think. And I won't carry in any mm -hmm. presuppositions from my previous experience into it because it's a new experience. That's made by new people. And so we went to AOS 4 with that. And so today's video, I want to talk to you not necessarily just about, obviously, the actual product and how the product's designed. Because you and I have interacted with it quite a bit. And I think the product design is fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. I actually think that from just a purely, we made a thing, here's the shape it's being delivered to you in, here's, here's the initial offering. I'll say three things about it that I'm just going to front load that I think you agree with me with. And you can, you can tell me if you don't. One the indexes and free materials are the best developed way that they've done this so far. The battle tome indexes are far more comprehensive and I think fun to play with than the 40K ones were last year for 40K 10. Agree. You get more yeah. shit to do with them, yeah. more different varieties of how to play the armies typically, and they feel very comprehensive versus mm -hmm. like a get you by. Yep, you absolutely, yeah. and, they're, and they're not complicated, nope. really. No, nope. no, no. I think the, uh, and then the second thing is, I think that the actual product design from the point of view of the new rule book, the way that the core books, the core rules are laid out, the modular system, and of course, introducing a new casual way, casual competitive way to play. Thank you for, thank you for casual fixing competitive, that. casual, thank you for fixing the that, casual yeah. competitive way to play, <laughs> which is, which is spearhead. Um, <laughs> I'm just using the words that they use, man. That's right. I'm just using the That's words right. that they use, yeah. casual it's competitive. It's important that we're clear. It's important that we, we have to use lawyer speak make, up, make up a clinical terminology for what's That's happening right. here. Um, the casual competitive match play way of playing, not match play way of playing, which is spearhead, um, is is very telling because I think what it does is it makes it makes it more accessible. It puts part of it down on a lower shelf for people Definitely. to engage with in a more, more approachable way where you're not having to do so much work to get to the actual action. Um, and then I brought you in because I wanted you to speak to how that went from a rollout point of view. So you're so the product's ready. It's sitting at the end of the conveyor belt. It's ready to get loaded on trucks to get shipped out to people. Now you're in that in-between state because yep. lots of people are making videos about how it's being received by the consumer. What you're here to do is talk to me about how did that handoff go? Where did, like, it's sitting here in the factory. It has to get to you or a Games Workshop retail store or their web store and then get over that hump to the consumer at some point. And some parts you're not involved in, obviously, the Games Workshop retail store you're not involved in, the web store you're not involved in, but you represent to me that in-between middleman that had to go through an experience. So I wanted to ask you how you think that went, how you think it landed, and just like where, if you were to compare it to 10th edition 40K last year, was it as big? Yeah, so I'll uh, I'll get my own biases and stuff out of the way and just give you a bit of context on like how my store is like Jay and I when people ask us, you know, what guy, what game do you guys play? What's your favorite, you know, game that you guys play? Jay and I both say AOS. It's been mine so, since it So came out. we literally are 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 the rare hobby shop where uh the people you interact with when you come into the store are standing for for their fantasy game, right? 
Uh, now, you know, I'll, I'll also say like, I'm not the kind of person that like, you know, comes in for, oh, well, you know, what are you working on? Oh, I'm, you know, getting something from my tower army. I'm not like, you got to check out this storm break. You know, I'm, I'm, sho I'm, jo you know, I'm shoving a fantasy yeah, model yeah, in their hands. You know, you're not, you're not talking about I'm crypto. not 15 years again. Hey, crypto, you're I'm not a crypto bro. You're not whatever, crypto bro you know? for, for AOS. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm Dogecoin. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm I get out of my own way. Yeah. yeah. Right. But you, you listen. There's a contagious yeah. element of what you're excited about sure. that you can't avoid because people see us painting models and having a good time. Your cabinets right? are full of beautiful AOS armies too. Correct. And you know, I might have like I have like one 40k army that I painted or one and a half 40k yeah. army. So you know, it doesn't take much investigating to know what I'm what I'm passionate about. So I have to say that first because I'm going to say how like it went in our store, and I'm going to talk about what I know about you know the area around me and how it did. Because so so I think we did pretty well with it. Mm -hmm. um we sold through most of our skaven tides um we sold about maybe like five or six less than dominion oh wow okay so it was close yep it was close considering how much more expensive it was i was pretty happy where and then it was a launch box not a starter set and it was basically a game box not a bundle because that's it's funny how bad and we'll do a video on this but it's funny how badly that's been communicated to people with Leviathan and now with Skaven Tide is that it's a launch bundle, not a starter set. And I think some people are having a, like, and that's the intent of it that Workshop is, because they're making starter sets. Yeah. So like, it's not intended to be a starter set. It's not so intended to sit on your shelf forever. Whereas in the past it was, it was the same, like it came out and the first thing that comes out is the thing that's gonna be there for three years that you sell to people to get them into the hobby. Exactly. And that's stopped, that doesn't exist yeah. anymore. So this thing is not an evergreen product. It's a, you play AOS, you're interested in these armies, let's sell you every one one of these boxes to get you going. Correct, and, and may, maybe we'll talk more about this in a future video, wink, yep. wink nudge, nudge, but um, when they stick around for a really long time on shelves, it does kind of convolute that message a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the goal is for those boxes to be gone relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, and we'd like that obviously to happen, but, uh, when they, you know, when you can still buy a dominion three years later after a shop, uh, you know, um, it, it does kind of break that message down. Sure. A little bit, I think yeah. for the consumer, um, so well, then they also yeah. made service yeah. after dominion. Yes. Which they did, get, which did blend that message and kind of confuse <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. They, they got, they got in their own way a little bit yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so I would say, I would compare, obviously there's a scale thing here because there's more 40 K players than there are US players. I would compare this summer's release so far to last summer's release. It's been good, but not great. Um, and I think because I have a good relationship with you and we, you know, I got to try Spearhead and um, I kind of keyed in really early that this was gonna be a really pivotal thing. Mm -hmm. We got ahead of the curve a little bit in the shop and we're sure. able to really promote that part of it. Yeah, and yeah. that's been good. Yeah, yeah. But I know a lot of shops that ha didn't get out ahead of it have really struggled with this launch and it hasn't it hasn't really hit home, um, at least not yet. And Skaven Tide, uh, I th I'm, you know, we, we called it a, a little bit of a flop on our channel. And I think that's probably fair because it sounds like Games Workshop made less of these overall and you know <laughs> the, the the jason zajac test he's, he's my business partner is you can if you can still go on the games workshop website and order an unlimited amount of them yeah you know that's it it, it 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 wasn't that rare no for for a box that they really want to create a lot of fomo for right and i think that's the goal with these launch boxes is they want them to sell relatively quickly right so well, what's it's, it's a hard yeah it's, it's a hard thing for me to answer because what is to even say with these launches anymore, like what is success? And like for me, it's just yeah. like, am I selling a lot of fantasy miniatures? Sure, that's I it. guess that's yeah, really got to be want. all it is, right? You want a new addition to be yeah. the thing that sells the yeah. wall. And then I'm also the secondarily, or even more primarily, I'm like, how many new people are are picking the game up, mm -hmm. giving it a chance for the first time? And that number is not as big as you kind of would hope, at least so far. So I guess my question would be. It's out, it's in your shop, it launches. Mm -hmm. Literally the next week, there's a pre-order for another game. For a Necromunda game. A brand new two-player starter set from Games Workshop. And a Horse Heresy box set. And then a Horse Heresy box set. And then, so and what impact is- dwarves. And, and old this, world dwarves. So, and that. So what what impact does that have on you? From, from the point of view of a retailer, 
it's as it, it how did it feel because I, I know how i would feel and i don't want to say that out loud because i want you to be able to answer first <laughs> but how did it feel that that there was just it, it was out and then it was done and then there's all these other things behind it all of a sudden that you're that the phone rings and they're like i saw this how many of these do you want how many of this do you want how many of that do you want yeah. that, that's a whole other game system and, and not related well, yeah, and, and and you know, just to give a little bit of insight, you know, uh, into into how it works now for us is on the launch for Skaven Tide, we've already put numbers in for like the next two things, sure, or three things that are coming. So my mind is already, you know, to me, like by the time I get to a release date, my mind's already like three weeks ahead. And that's crazy Isn't because, it? like, well, but what? How does that trickle into the customer? So it's think of you yeah. as that middleman because they're coming right? to pick up this thing and they're excited about. It. They're sp like they're spending like console money on. It. Yeah, you know and, what I mean. And so, and and you're thinking, well, what am I going to do when this Necromunda box comes out? That's right. How? What about these old? And I, and you've got another guy standing at the counter being like, hey, did you see the review for the old world dwarves? Hey, did you? I got someone calling it? and being like, oh, Warhammer Community dropped this article about this thing. Uh, can you put like, you know, I want one. I'm like, I don't have a date for that yet. And and yeah, so you're fighting. You're like a time warrior, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm trapped in this time war that I'm like fighting against the future and the past. And like, I'm trying to balance all these things. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it can be, it can get really overwhelming for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, especially, so take that, that, that tension and that like stuff and compare it to like your investment. Like if we peel mm. this back for the viewer, sure. if you think about how much money you've spent putting boxes on your wall. And then how your your attention's being divided by all these releases and stuff like that, and then what what is that impact on having yourself distracted from the follow through? Because you, you've got yeah. you've, you've got if you're talking about like what I wanted this to create opportunities for me to sell all of my AOS stuff, but you're literally having to have com field conversations and order and have your brain onto the next thing, the next thing, and the next thing what's the trickle down there? Because there's going to be a trickle down where you don't get the opportunity to have those, that kind of ongoing excitement and for you to build up that, that new pillar of a game. Cause if AOS is supposed to be a pillar, isn't that more like, isn't there a time where that's got to be more important? Well, than, and, than the and, next and, you know, release, the old, right? the like, old, uh, you know, games workshop employee in me, uh, it was drilled into us, uh, by some smart people. <laughs> um, that you know you know you really don't want to focus too much on your releases because everything on your wall that your customer doesn't have is in your release to them right and that i always go back to that every time there's a launch i'm like the the aos 4 really is you get to relaunch your entire wall of your store yeah right and and to your to your point though the company that used to say that is now just throwing daggers at you <laughs> not you know not literally but like well they're distraction just, it's you know the next thing, thing. yeah, yeah. Well, we're, because we're not talking them, about that now because talking about this. trade like it's like you know we said that this is a previous industry talk and i've said this on my channel not exactly but in in a, in a lot of ways it's like hey guys we got we got the truck that's coming to your store and we're dropping stuff off like how much or how much are you taking and so you're so focused on on getting that right Every week. Well, and the pressure's on those trade guys too, because once that sale's done, it's over. That's it. Like it, that's, it. It, that's that mentality of like, you talked about on your channel about the dump truck. They're paid once you buy it. Exactly. There's not necessarily an investment anymore in you than being able to sell it on. Once it's in your store, to them, it's done. They're not having a risk conversation with you. Exactly. They're having a purely sales conversation. And you're the one now yeah. assuming the risk. So. And again, this was the kind of the last thought I wanted to bring up in this video in particular with AOS 4. You are, how do you, how do you think that trickled down into the launch where you're kind of the one being asked to gamble on this? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you for sure. And I, I definitely said this to you last year is it's made us ex like way more conservative, mm -hmm. right? We, we just don't take risks like we used to. Um, we we were it's, it's almost like the nintendo model you know they're like you know let's just sell out mm -hmm. you know let's get let's get the number that we know we can sell out mm -hmm. and be okay with that right mm -hmm. and it, hey if, if i'm wrong and i miss out on some people and i have to send them somewhere else at least i made my money and i can move on to the next thing mm -hmm. because that's what they want me to do um Whereas the, you know the other version of that is you know you have 80 dominions that you have to move and that's forcing right? you to treat it like they do that's yes. the interesting thing. Yes. Yeah. Is is you're being put in a position where 
their needing to get it out of the warehouse to make room for the next thing turns into you needing to get it out of your store to make room for the next thing they're going to send you. Exactly. And so, yeah. so it's interesting how culturally mm -hmm. a shift in that model is almost putting you in the position where you also have to shift that model. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, you can't hold your breath or gamble. Right. So either of those become untenable. It just becomes, you're almost like a, a, an access point, a delivery point yeah. where we make the safe bet and the safe order. And so now that becomes the bottleneck back upstream of them selling out all the things they want to sell it to make that number too, yeah. which, which I think is, is a very interesting problem. Which is why you, you know, I mean, I, I completely understand why the discounting model is so popular, mm -hmm. right? Like, because if, if your goal is just to um, do the same thing, but to your customer, you know, your, 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 uh, your direct customer in the shop is to like, get them to buy as much stuff as possible. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most efficient way to do that, right? Is to is to get the stuff out of your store and just kind of clear space for the next thing and just keep turning and burning, right? Um, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I, that doesn't I, make your store. You know, like payments, well, right? Like that's again, I, we talked yeah. in a previous video about is it better to have a hundred customers that spend fifty bucks versus fifty customers spend a hundred bucks? Yeah, there's less risk in a hundred customers that spend fifty bucks, right? There's less because you have a more robust and large customer base, losing each one doesn't hurt potentially mm -hmm. as much. And then you can and you can grow that number. So you always wanna have more customers, even if they spend less money, versus yeah. less customers that spend a lot of money. How and, I, do you, and I always go back to like, you want you want people to feel like the thing they got matters and- Sure. And and so, so you, know, you know, we do our best to almost be a filter when we can to the FOMO, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell you, I mean, yeah, uh, like, you know, an old, old person we used to work with, Lionel, he, he, he was great at this. He's like, sometimes you got to sell someone something that's worth less to, to, you know, earn their trust or whatever. But like, it, you know, you do the right, it's doing the right thing, right? It's like talking someone out of something. Yeah, and saying this is probably you know, the like, thing. You know, Even if it's more money than you're gonna make right why, now. Why do you actually want this, yeah. you know? Um, this might not be what you think it's going and, to be. And I find myself doing that a lot more now um, because there's, there is a lot of FOMO in the air all the time with mm -hmm. things, you know, you know New releases, and this is probably the way Games Workshop likes it. New, new releases tend to sell out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, every every week they come out, so people know. Oh, if I don't get it How now, how much of that is you ordering conservatively, though? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Like, I'm, I'm when I say sell out, I mean I mean like the web store's out. Like, you I can't re saying. restock yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's um, and that we can challenge probably. Yeah. We can probably challenge the viewers to do that right now. If you can go to Games Workshop's website, how many Skaven Tides can you order? Uh, yeah. <laughs> can well, you, not can Skaven Tide, though. <laughs> can you order Skaven Tides? Because I'm pretty sure you can order a lot of Skaven Tides yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. It's, sure. it's not throttled at all. That product's just... just but, you know, other on. things like if, uh, if, if you know, uh, if and when this new Inquisitor Agent book comes out, like, I'm sure the new character and box sets will will sell out. Sure, of course they will. You'll be waiting six months to get them again. Yeah, it's a cool... Right? Well, so, they probably won't come back. Yeah. They'll probably be one of yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, to me, that's the, that's the question of, like of like you're designing a product for sale. Cool. And that that actually is going mm -hmm. to lead us to my final question, which will also be a dovetail in the next video, which we'll talk about maybe a little bit at the end of this, which is when you launch a new edition of a game, why are you designing a product that doesn't make new customers if having more customers is better? A launch bundle mm -hmm. is designed to be thrown at people who already know what this stuff is, right? You get one chance to make a first impression. Why can't you design a singular product that does that the whole cycle of that edition? Because that's the way things used to happen was your launch bundle was your starter set. You made one thing. And, and do you think there's an impact on the way these things are designed? Because they are not loss leaders. So is Games, is Games Workshop gambling through a scarcity mindset of we want to sell less of these big things for more money versus making less money on them individually, but selling more of them. I'm scared to think, you know, I, I, I try not to be this cynical, but I'm scared to think that like they come up with the number first. We want to make this much money selling this new box. Don't be scared to think that. That's and, what happens. And then they, that's work, what their, and then they work their way back from that, that's, right? That, I think that's, that's and, exactly And probably the scariest things. thing that ever happened for future customers of Games Workshop is when they, when they released the Adeptus Titanicus box and they blew out that game yep. for 400 bucks a pop or whatever it cost. They're like, oh, like that was a bit. I think that was a big eye-opening moment for them, because that that was something they had never ever dreamed or tried before, and it actually worked. And right? it was basically unplayable too, which is very. Funny. It wasn't a game at all. <laughs> and so, so there's two worlds that couldn't kill hey, each other. But yeah. that's isn't that even more telling, right? It didn't even matter, didn't right? Matter. And that's it's like, 
that's the mentality now, right? With with the box sets, I, I feel like. Well, it's it's. I think what you're talking about is a cultural shift. If I was talking about the AOS launch this time around, it's a cultural shift where there's a disconnect between the people creating the items, the products themselves, which I think are incredibly well crafted. Sure. Yeah. I think the AOS team is probably the best team working at Games Workshop right now from the point of view of making something for the end user and to create an experience for the end user. I think they're an incredibly talented team and I got a lot of time for their lead. Mm -hmm. Versus the people who then decide how that's going to get sold to people. I think there's a disconnect between those two parties and in corporations that happens mm -hmm. because the presentation of the product actually matters more to its success than the product itself does. And you just proved that point with Titanicus. Yeah. Is that the product? The product of is a good game, I, and I love James. He makes great games. Yeah, yeah. But again, the way that that game was put together and presented with two warlord titans and a book and a, and the things, and some knights or whatever. It was yeah. a it was a game you couldn't. It, it didn't. It didn't work. Like yeah. it just didn't work. The titan you couldn't experience what the game is supposed to be with what was in the bundle right. of product. Right. right. So when we walk that back to AOS four and go, well, you designed this launch box because you wanted to forecast how much money you were gonna make versus cost, versus creating a product that we could sell tons of them, Do potentially you? at a lower value to more people to take a chance on this and then hope to make more sales in the future. It's it's the scarcity mindset, I'm gonna make money once, Yeah. I'm gonna make it one time, it has to be exactly this month because the line has to go up during this month versus I'm going to invest in the future of selling this product line by creating a product that allows more people to take a chance on it mm -hmm. and have it in the background. To me, it's it's Kickstarter vibes, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. It's Kickstarter yeah, it's a vibes. vibes. It's, it's we have this one chance to make as much money as we can, and we're going to just basically try and ram as much value into it as we can perceive value. Mm -hmm. I would say it's, it's Games Workshop dollars, right? It's like <laughs> it's like you get a thousand dollars and ninety bucks worth of models in Games Workshop money. In theory, yeah. in theory, in theory in right? Games Workshop theory. Yeah, yeah, I'm not bashing the value. It's, if these, are, awesome if these are boxes we buy individually, yeah. it's going to add up to this. Um, and and then you know they they have their price and and and, and then they, they try to make it as expensive as they can to get away with it. Now, I think I think that's the difference there. Is make it's the not money, make exactly the money we want now. Yeah. It's not a. It's not like let's give a ton of value and create an experience like you said, like they used to do with those box sets that had names you remember. It's, it's, it's about making as much money as they can in that one moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's fast nickels instead of slow. For sure. Yeah. Whereas, assault on Black Reach was both of those things actually yep. in hindsight, right? It 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 made a ton of money on launch, and then it was a great set that you could sell for. Th five more years or whatever it was. Six and we'll more talk years, about that right? next episode because yeah. I think that that's a, that's a whole other thing to get into. But what do you, I guess my question then is as that middleman, at the buying point, how did that, how did the price of that box set and what it was affect your decision to purchase them for your store? And how did, when you were communicating with your customers, what did you run into perception wise from them as to the value of how that box was constructed. Cause those are the two really interesting talking points that I want to hear about. Yes. Is, is, is it not being a launch lead, lo, lo, like a loss leader being a launch box that affected how you thought when you bought it from games workshop and that had to have an impact in the conversations you had with customers. So, so walk me through that. What, from, from your mindset, so how did you feel to, about to, having to, 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 to ta tackle stuff? that in order, which I think is yeah. the right way to tackle it is the first thing is you cannot not have the very, you know, the memory of the last <clears throat> few ones always impacts your decisions on. Of course. It. So you have Leviathan that happened the season before that just happened, which was good, but not great. And you, like I said, you could still buy a Leviathan today. And maybe not at every shop, but you can find them. Um, and then you go back two more years, so three years total, and you had Dominion, which is the last AOS launch. Yeah. And you can still buy Dominions today. So... Right away, as a as a thought, you're like, I don't need extras of these, right? Because I'll be able to order it next week, right? If I have someone that comes in and wants one, I can get one next. So week. that so that's the thought that, that's going through, your and, head. and that's not just going through my head. That's going through every independent retailer's head. That that's learned. Mm -hmm. like, how could you not learn? Mm -hmm. You're getting if you got pummeled on in, Dominion, in your network that you, you know, talk to. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's obviously everybody's have, everybody's yeah. learned that lesson, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that pushes the numbers down. And then completely aside from that, when you, you have the customer conversation, 
what, what, what we're always doing is we're feeling, you know, we're feeling out for people like, you know, what do you, what do you think about the new box? Are you interested? We're trying to get like almost like a soft list as sure. early as we can to help us dictate how many numbers we need on things, right? Um, and general, so what we found as the prices jumped so much, the the pe people focus a lot more on the content specifically mm -hmm. versus the general value now. So what I mean by that is people are a lot more focused on, do I really love one of the armies? Do I really want both of these armies? Um, versus, you know, when the box was 220 or 180 bucks or even $100, God, that was long. It seems like 85 bucks, 65 bucks yep. when I started. You, you, all, you could almost say to yourself, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it, I, I can use these for something. And, and it's, it's less of a, uh, of a real thought process. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the number for Canadians, like 320 bucks, I think it was, um, that is a real decision to make, right? Sure. So you're like, I, I gotta make, I'm, am I really going to love one of these armies? Do, do I, do I think I can sell the other miniatures or do I have a buddy that wants them? There's all these thoughts that kind of like, uh, we're calling them sales objections that come up, right? Where, uh, just things that people will think about, right? Um, do I really want all the books that are in there? What am I going to play? Am I just going to play Spearhead? Am I going to play the full AOS? We talked about that at Spirit Launch, where or Spirit, like the first little Spirit Fest we did, where it's like a bunch of guys showed up with the Spearhead stuff already because they just grabbed it off Facebook Marketplace because people were just dumping that to recoup some value. From I had a customer dump box. it and then rebuy it. Really? Yeah. Because he because he discovered he did, it was actually he didn't fun. Realize, yeah, he didn't realize. He didn't realize yeah. it was going to be fun. And you know what? I, really I don't blame funny. the guy. No, no, no. That's true. He actually made a probably a pretty rational decision to ditch it yeah. and get a few quick bucks to recoup some of that box and then f like found out was like oh no spearhead's actually like a lot of fun awesome yeah okay i'll, I'll rebuy it or whatever so yeah <laughs> it's, it's just kind of funny right so that's a, that's really funny. but i think that price causes that to sure. happen right i think I, I, you know you know, people are people don't just spend you know I mean, i'm not speaking for everybody but like you know i don't just go out and spend 350 dollars no. without like That'd be like a serious conversation with my wife and like, you know, like it's like, <laughs> that's half a canoe. That's a, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's you know, a paddle like, board. Like there's a lot of like, I get a lot of time for 320 bucks. That's like two nights away or something. <laughs> that's one tank gas or, almost you know, for some cars. That's only one concert now. <laughs> oh my God. That's, that's, that's one and a half childish Gambino tickets for, uh, oh for, for this, for this upcoming concert, oh man. which is insane. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I was gonna go see Gambino, and then I saw the price of tickets, and I was like, Ooh. "Not that much. <laughs> I'll just wait for I'll just wait for the Community movie, and I'll." I'll that's get my... the that's the launch box effect, though. That is a launch box effect. There, like, how could price not matter? That's that's what I always say, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then, what's your intent? Right, your intent is we need yeah. to sell exactly this many boxes yeah. for this price to make this money, versus these are seeds we're planting that are going to turn into long term customers are going to buy yeah. stuff. And, and this will just be my, my segue comment for the next video because we're going long on this one too, is if you are only invested in the immediate quarter, you are creating missed opportunities and you're also, you're, you're creating a very different customer experience than you potentially trying to do later on because you only get one chance at a first impression. Well, right. and so if you're going to come along with starter sets later on that are just the identical product reboxed, you, you've already all the excitement's gone. Yeah. You have one. You have one chance when people are excited to get people excited about something. If they don't buy it, then they're not going to buy those things later yeah. on. You're just relying on the the brand new shiny face customer that comes into your shop, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think um, ultimately that's the the danger of like this, this model where, where it's like, just, you know, try to sell existing customers a big ticket item. Right? And, and yeah. also give most of it away for free at the same time. Yeah. Anybody who's an existing customer, you gave them the core rules and all their index cards for free at the same time. So you didn't just say, Hey, here's this giant premium bundle for you to get all these physical objects. Mm -hmm. But also if you don't give a shit, here is it all for free on the website. Those things are so counterintuitive to do both. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost schizophrenic. I don't know why you would do both those things at the same time. You would at least hold back the free shit for a month, two months launch box at first, but I mm -hmm. guess they just can't now because you needed the court, you needed the rules for the armies to be available in some form. Well, and I, maybe all this will be my last kind of thing I'll in this video. I don't want to go on for too long, but like, I think 
you know, we did a video uh, about the the sales reports for Games Workshop, their annual statement. And we we know we have, you know, pretty good evidence that like AOS didn't have a great last year. I can tell you in the shop it was sure. it wasn't great, right? They're winding it down. Doing they books. need they need this addition to to do well. And and what what I think what I mean by that is they need new people playing AOS. Of course they do. Yeah. And I think they know that too. But if that is your goal right from the get go, having the most expensive launch box you've ever put out, I, I just question is that the is that the route, right? I just I don't know. It well, se- it seems it, yes. It, again, <laughs> it, it feels like there are groups inside of the overall yeah. competing against each other for different reasons, and there isn't a singular mission right. for a product. Yeah. And there should just be a singular mission. There should be a singular mission for pillar products versus individual product. Like there, there, there's a way of dividing this all up so that all your customers are still happy mm-hmm. and you win long term. And I think that there's they're they're doing the shortest possible path right now to money in the short term and not doing a lot of investment for down the road. And I, that, I, that I, kind of that translates and, into how and I think they could I think they think that it's just about making it the best product they can make. And, and they're not wrong. That's important. That's a, that's a huge part of it. But I, I don't I, I don't think that's the only thing that matters. No. Right. No, because how it gets the, the experience of the end user is going to dictate whether or not they stay. And this is and, a hobby and like you always that takes talk about time the, to do. The, the shelf it's on, right? Like that's yeah. a, a huge how component of it, how accessible things are, right? Yeah. Ultimately, it always, it, that always matters. Well, you don't stay if you don't finish the gameplay loop. People drop Dark Souls and Elden Ring because it's too hard initially. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you just want a mass market example of what Games Workshop's doing right now, they're making nothing but Elden Rings. And that can be a game of the year and be on everyone's list and be awesome and be beautiful and be pretty and still sell tons of units. But how many people beat it and stuck with it and will buy the next one? Right. Or when the next Elden Ring comes out, go, eh, I didn't beat the last one. Right. Yeah. So that's that's the danger, I think, to me, right? And in, in these launch box style things and these big sort of like swings of not having a clear plan for making stuff that that goes that goes for everybody right from the beginning when everyone's most excited about it. Because you can always add complexity. Yes. You can't take it away. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You can always add price later on. Yeah. You can't take it away in the beginning. All right. Yeah. All right. So next up, we're going to elaborate on that more. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, man. Where can people find you? Uh, yeah, we, we're obviously uh, we're on the YouTubes as well. Uh, Lords War Games and Hobbies, easy to find. Um, and then if you're local... Come visit us yep. in Oakville, Ontario, or uh, we have a web store too, so you can check that out. And if you want the nudes, com. you can go to patreon.com. Oh, yeah, it gets, pretty, it gets pretty nasty. It gets gross there. back there. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, gets, yeah. if you want to get really gross, that's where you get it on the Patreon. <laughs> Same with me. If you want my feet pics, they're on uh, patreon.com slash grill miniature games. You also get to hang out at the patrons for our Monday hangs, which are sometimes on a Wednesday, as I try and spread them out for most people to come and find them. Um, and we also do this show in podcast form with the exclusive patron podcast stream. So if you don't want to see our faces and you just want hear it you can do that too um as well as other exclusive content uh manuscripts stuff like that and other interactions that we do uh so thanks for coming in man yeah it's fun as always all right sweet we'll see you the next one until then bye everybody